the money, it's not about the fame, it's all about how you play the game. Welcome to What Success Looks Like. Today we've got on our show Lisa Rothstein. She is, well, on her site she says she is your writer for hire. So I guess we're going to go and process some of that a little bit. Lisa, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. Glad to have you on. I was privilege to meet you in one of the Facebook groups online. We're both doing things. We're building businesses. We're looking for success. Uh, I think we've achieved that to some degree already because we're still in the game. We're sticking it through. So, right. And we'll talk about what your vision of success is later on in the show today. But why don't you start, why don't we start by you t kind of telling me a little bit about who you are, what it is that you do currently. Well, um, your writer for hire is actually something that I've been doing all my life. I've been uh, I've been a writer on Madison Avenue. Like if you watch Mad Men, mm -hmm. I was like Peggy. Uh, right, maybe twenty years later, but I started off like her um, and did that for a long, long time. And now I work with uh, on a freelance basis as a consultant with entrepreneurs and also with corporate to help them with their marketing and their and their copy. Okay. Uh, but it's it's bigger than just writing, though. It's more um, it's more has to do with strategy, ideas, ideas, big ideas and concepts. I mean, on Madison Avenue, my big claim to fame was if you remember the original, "Wait till we get our hands on you" commercial. Ah. That I, that was my slogan. That was my campaign. So that's the kind of thing that I like to do is to take things like plain white underwear, and think how can we make this something into something bigger? How can we create a story around this and make, and make, and so even with entrepreneurs, you get these people who are just like one person, but how can they be uh, a, a brand that means something in the world? And that's, that's what I like to do with people. Okay. So uh, I'm going to ask you a question. What do you find is the biggest downfall? I know that a lot of businesses, especially small businesses kind of starting out, Right. A lot of people really don't know which way to go, and then you know some of them have they they, they figure they're going to get business cards, they're going to get a website, they're going to do some stuff. Uh, what do you find as the biggest faux pas? Well, well, what you just said is actually is actually it. People are looking at tactics and things. They're looking at visible things like a website mm -hmm. or a business card and something that they can ta tangibly hang on to. But what are these things supposed to be for? Right. They're not thinking about the content or the or the strategy behind any of these things. Because a traditional website, you know, would be sort of like a brochure that just is online, just sits there. Right. And and they think they build a website and people are just going to show up and 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 want their services and it's just not true. <laughs> They're worried about their business, their, their business cards, but they should be thinking more about getting business cards instead of giving them, right. because it's all about you know having the having the power to communicate with people on your terms, not hoping they'll call, call you, not hoping they'll happen to visit your website and remember to come back. So, people you know people are doing a lot of things. They're spending a lot of money and time on things that are useful, but that, but without the, the 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 strategy behind it. Without, you know, without the reason why these, they don't understand why they're not getting the results that they want. Um, that's the biggest. That's the number one biggest reason. And the number two, I think, especially in terms of marketing, which is where I come from, is they is they seem to be very concerned about telling people what they do right. and who they are and what their mission is. And it's me, me, me. We used to call it wee wee advertising right. in uh, in the business. And 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 they don't talk enough about their customers. They okay. don't. They're not focused enough on the customer's needs and that's the other reason why they have problems. Okay, awesome. So now you've got, we're, we're going to get back to what you do and to your business in a little bit, but what I one of the things we like to process here is the story, mm -hmm. the back story. Everybody's got a story. Some stories are more dramatic than others. Of course, we had somebody on a few weeks ago who started out or, or they got to a point where they were homeless and they worked from that right. into success to a successful business. Now, wh what's, what's your backstory? What's your low point? Wh where have you come from to get to where you are now? Right. Well, see, I have kind of a more of a of an up and down and then up again story yeah. because I, you know, I went to, you know, very, I, I was raised by middle class parents. They were, I was fortunate to go to a very good college. Right out of college, I got this great job mm -hmm. on Madison Avenue. Well, I was 20 years old, you know, started my dream job. I was making no money, but I was happy to have it. I would have done it for free. Right. And I did really well at it. You know, they sent me to Europe for a while. I mean, it was really, it was pretty cool. I have to say it was a pretty cool gig. And then, you know, my company merged. My job went away, 
And it was okay because I thought, oh, I know, I'll just, I, I've always wanted to do my own thing. I, I, I'm, I'm ready to be a, free, you know, a freelancer or at least have my own business. Right. I wanted to have my own time to write screenplays and, and do all kinds of other creative things. So I thought, this will be fine. I can handle this. I can do this on my own. Well, guess what? You know, after always having somebody else's brand name on me, right. you know, Brown University, boom, I, I must be good. You know, right. Young and Group Account, boom. I must be good. Now, here I was all by myself, and I was expecting people to, uh, I was expecting people to respect me just for me, and it really was, I didn't feel like I was happening. I didn't respect me just for me. I didn't, didn't realize that until all that other stuff was gone. Right. And I, you know, on my own, it wasn't so much that I wasn't making money. I wasn't, I, I did and I didn't. I was, I was up and down, but it was more the loss of identity, right. the loss of, of self-worth that came and hit me out of nowhere like a freight train, I really didn't expect it. And I went into it, you know, really, I won't say a deep depression because I, you know, I wasn't clinically depressed. I won't, you know, I wouldn't say that, but it was very, it was a long wilderness period, wow. you know? And then I came back, I came back to the States for, for an opportunity that didn't end up really working out as much as I put, planned, but I did meet my husband, which was cool. <laughs> but in the meantime, so you, know, so you never know what's going to happen. I came back to the States because I got, uh, I, wrote, I wrote a screenplay while I was in the depths of despair. I wrote a screenplay that won some awards and got an agent. And she said, come to, come to Hollywood. And then I did. And then I had a lot of meetings and then nothing happened, you wow. know. So, um, but I met my husband and I was still struggling though in my business. And um, it, it, over time, though, I began to just, you know, little by little kind of build the bricks of my own, of my own value that was not connected to another big company or was not connected to where I went to school and had to do more with what I was able to help other people do. Because I began to notice other small business people who really didn't know what to do about their marketing, who didn't know how to get customers, who didn't know how to talk about what they did. And so in helping them, I began to feel... Um, a different kind of value, you know, a different kind of of uh, self self worth, in in that I was able to actually reach out and help people. And this was something that was not for my ego. It was more for you know just really feeling like I could actually be a service. Right. And and the more I felt that way, and this is, goes back to a little bit what I said at the beginning. The more I, be, I I focused on that, the better my business did. Because I was out, I wasn't thinking about myself and what do they think of me. I was thinking about how can I help this person? Look what they're doing. They're doing this wrong. If I can just fix this and I can show them that, then then oh wow, look, they're getting results. Oh, they're so happy. You know, their 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 business is is growing, and now you know I feel like I was part of that. I feel better. I feel right. better about myself and all that. So before I had to f to feel better, I had to say, look at my business card. Whose name is on it? That's not mine. Right. Someone else's. Now I now I can feel. Um, you know, now I now my worth does not come from the name of some other company, from some other somebody else's brand name. But it took a long time, and it's because I wasn't prepared for it. I didn't realize because I went straight out of school right into work how right. much I'd invested in that. So, you know, and there was a long time when I wasn't making, you know, almost any money living off my savings and stuff like that. Right. And I was thinking, where, how is this ever going to change? I don't really want to go back and get a job. Again, right. um, at this at this point, probably nobody will will hire me because in my business you have to be like twenty years old. Right. So, you know, I, I, that's a belief. I don't know if I really wanted a job. I guess I could get one, but I really didn't want one. But right. I, it took a long time for me to make the transition from accidental freelancer to no, this is what I'm doing. Right. You know. Um, exactly. So so that's that's one thing that I, you know I, I do talk about a little bit in uh, in um, in some of the my talks because. Um, a lot of the people I, when I speak, I speak to other entrepreneurs and, you know, I always talk to them how hard it is to sell yourself, how right. hard it is to talk about your, what you do in your own business. And I wanted to let them know that was even true for me, even though I did it for other, for, for other, other things and other brands like IBM and Haynes and Bacardi. I, I, you know, it's easy for me to talk about what's great about what they've got, right. but, what it, but when I'm the, the product, it's like, oh my God, who am I? And it's, a, and it's the same thing with a lot of my clients. They either don't have the... They either don't, they don't really see their value or they just don't know how to talk about it. So wow. that's where I help, you know, that's where my story helps me do my business. So Awesome. So you, you, you spoke about coming right out of college mm -hmm. and being able to jump right into what was your dream job. Right. So how different is what you were doing then outside of the whole identity stuff that you just talked right. about? How different is what you were doing then than what you're doing now? 
Well, there are some similarities. I mean, the big similarities, and that's what I like to bring to the table, is, you know, for me, it's all about the big concept, the, you know, the big idea, what's the, what do you stand for? What does a brand or a person or anybody stand for? What do you mean in the world? So that's, that is the same. What's different is, you know, being in a job, I mean, the downside is, you know, they own you. You, you know, you, have, you make plans for the weekend, you can forget about that. You know, right. never plan a vacation, never, never, you know, don't have, any, don't have a life. And when, when you're 25, that's okay. You know, at this point, I don't really want a life like that. Right. But what I miss and what I try to kind of construct myself in my world now is the camaraderie of the people at the office. Uh. Because we had a fantastic group of people. Um, I'm sure that this is true in some other businesses, but I, I would be surprised if there was any kind of business, more than advertising, where you could be surrounded by a more brilliant, fun, funny group of people where we just all go in there every day and just have a blast. You know, right. we had a really good time at the office. And we would complain and bitch about our, you know, about our deadlines or our bosses and stuff like that. And, yeah, sometimes it was hard because you had to have ideas on demand. And, oh, my God, it's due tomorrow and you haven't had any, you know, you're, it's 3 in the morning and you don't have an idea. Right. Oh, my God, you know, what are you going to do? So there was a lot of pressure. But the people is what I miss. So now I go to a lot of seminars. I like to see my clients in person when I can. Yeah. Although, although many of them are, like, in other countries, I've never laid eyes on them in person. Best I've closest I've come is something like this. Right. But but um, I do like to get out with people because it's really and that's why I like to go to seminars. I like to speak at seminars because I get to uh, you know sort of have that bouncing off quality with people. Right. So I like to invite my clients here. I'm in San Diego <clears throat> now, and I like to invite my clients here for for a day. You know, we spend the day together and we just you know bounce things off each other and just they walk away with a lot of new great ideas for their business and, you know, as a plan going forward and stuff like that. So that's, that's a lot of fun for me and that's a lot of fun for them too. Okay. Let, let's talk about <laughs> inspiration for a second. So um, what was the moment? Was, the, was there a watershed moment that, that you really kind of said, wow, this is absolutely what I want to do. This is it. This is how I want to spend the rest of my life. <laughs> well, you know what? I don't know if there's ever anything I was going to want to spend the rest of my life doing. I yeah. mean, one of the, one of the other things we'll talk about later maybe is uh, I have a I have a book and a and a blog that I write a book that's coming out eventually. Yep. <laughs> called the Da Vinci Dilemma. It's all about people with multiple talents and have too many talents and too many different ideas and don't really know which one to focus on. Right. But I but when I was a little girl, I used to watch TV and I noticed even when I was five or six years old that I would watch the commercials with a lot of interest. Right. And memorize them and sing all the jingles and all that stuff and and pretty much leave during the TV programs. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really that interested in the programs. I really liked the commercials. And as I grew up, I, I realized, oh, my God, they, pe people get paid for doing this, right. for making these things. So to me, what was exciting about that was you could take a bar of soap that's just a bar of soap. It's just chemicals in a, in a, in a box, you know, and then you, but you make this whole thing about around it that it's, just, it's all out of your imagination. It's all invention. I mean, I yeah. worked on Irish Spring for a while, Irish Spring Soap. Right. There's absolutely nothing Irish about Irish Spring Soap. It's green. <laughs> But there's no little there's no little Irish man who pops out of the box saying oh and I, oh and I like it too. There's nobody there doing yeah. that, you know. Yeah. But 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 you create this entire uh, um, now that wasn't my idea. <clears throat> I worked on it for a while. Right. But it, you they create this entire uh, sort of world in the people's imagination. So now now they get in the shower with that piece of green soap and they and they're thinking they're in Ireland. There's nothing Irish in there, you know. <laughs> but it's just to me that was always so cool that yeah. you could just that, and to me it was it, it it put magic into products that otherwise would just be just sitting there on the shelf, you know. And so some people would say to me, oh well, you know, you work you know the kind of work you do, you just make people buy things you, they don't need. You know that's all. You know that's what you, that's what you do for a living. And I'm like, well, well, how, who are you to say they don't need it? You right. know, who are you to say that they don't need that they don't need to have a, you know, an imaginary fun experience while they're having a shower? You know, who are you to say that they don't like that they don't want to feel better about the clothes they put on their body? Right. You know, it's true that there's nothing. We're making some of this stuff up, but it's it's a you know your your mental and imaginary experience of what you're doing is as important to you as maybe even more important than the actual you know, physical experience. Yeah. When you go in a restaurant, you know, they can just slap a, a steak on the table and, you know, put some salt and pepper on it and say, here you go. And they can take the same piece of meat and present it on a beautiful plate with beautiful silverware and, and, and treat you with respect. And it's a whole different experience. Yeah. It's the same piece of meat, you know, exactly the same. Absolutely. So that's, that's what, that to me is what, is what good advertising is, what good marketing is, what I try to help people to do with their businesses. How are you going to present what you're doing in a way that people go, oh, I want that. Right. Not like, oh, well, I, I'll just check around and see who's the cheapest, <laughs> you know? Yep, absolutely. So, so uh, you mentioned um, being 
missing some of the camaraderie of, mm-hmm. of the office a little bit sometimes and kind of as, a, attending seminars. So I, inside of that, there is this motivation. There's this thing that you've got to get up with every day to say, I'm going to be able to do this. I'm going to go forward. I'm going to be exceptional today. What what are the things that you do daily to encourage and inspire yourself to go on, to go forward? Well, that's that's a great question. For a while, I was not uh, giving myself that gift. You know, right. For a while, I was just expecting it to happen naturally, and it wasn't. And I thought, oh, there's something wrong with me. Yeah. So, uh, you know, so, but I, I realized, I mean, I need to get, I need to be inspired every day, but I also need to get kind of grounded because my, I'm all, you know, I'm all over the place and I'm always having people telling me I have to slow down. Yeah. So one of the things that I do in the morning when I get, when I, when I, when I'm able to stick to my routine is I get up, I, you know, I just kind of get, wake up and then I get out the door, I take a walk and, um, I take a, you know, three, 30, 40 minute walk in the morning yeah. just, just to get going, just to clear my head. I have a lot of great ideas while I'm out there. I take my iPhone and I talk into it if I have an idea um, while I'm walking uh, for a blog post or a, or a great idea for one of my clients or a great, great new idea for a product or, or service in my business. Right. And then when I come back, I feel energized. I feel relaxed and centered. I can sit down now and, 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 get some, and get some work done. The other thing I do is before I go out walking, while I'm making coffee and cleaning up and you know just kind of waking up, I've got YouTube on in the background or one of my motivational speaker CDs on in the background. Right. So I'm listening to Brian Tracy or Les Brown or Tony Robbins or, or um, you know, or somebody or uh, or Jim Rohn, great right. late great Jim Rohn. Yeah. I like to listen to that kind of stuff, uh, you know, personal development stuff on uh, while I'm you know at the first thing in the morning. Right. Then I get out for my walk. Then I come back and write down all the the ideas I had on my walk, and now I'm ready for my day. So that's those are ways that I you know I get I, I get reconnect with my passion and my vision while I'm out on my walk, and then I journal about it when I come back. Right. So it really helps a lot to have that little sort of um, three step routine, and then I have some kind of you know every once in a while I'll do a little bit of sort of more spiritual stuff, you know, Bible stuff and things like that. But you know, it's it's to kind of reconnect with 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 the with the real with the vision. What why am I here? Why am I doing this? Right. You know. Right. Yeah. Well, I as as an entrepreneur as as a freelance consultant. Um, you definitely go through a lot of experiences. And I had a post on my page the other day that said something to the effect of, in order to succeed, you've got to fail. That's how you know what not to do the next time. And it's I true. had some people disagree with me about that. Um, you know, there's some people that saying, oh, you succeed. There's situations where you succeed the first time. You know, and it, was, it wasn't about going back and forth. But the reality is, I think each of us experiences failure and it's it's really about how do you how do you deal with this so what are the things that you've done with yourself how have you uh, i don't want to say safeguarded yourself how have, how have you put some structure in place for yourself to mentally deal with failure well that is a super that is a really really uh, po- uh poignant question for me because one of my biggest uh, blessings and curses in my life is that a lot of stuff has really come easily to me the first time, really right. easy at the beginning. So, like you know, like walking into that job right out of school, you know, I had to I had to interview for it, and there, you know, and there were like six spots, and I got one of them, thousands of people, and whatever. And I, I know I printed a hundred resumes and only ever used one in my whole right. life because every time I after that I never had to look for another job. You know, I just had that job. Then my boss left, and he took me with him, and you know, it was just. But the problem is that when you don't experience failure, you right. think that when you do, that means, oh, that means I'm not supposed to do this. Right. You know, uh, it's, it's sort of like you fall in love with someone and the minute uh, you stop feeling like, oh, my God, I'm in love, you think, oh, there's something wrong with this relationship when it's right. just natural, you know, to, to experience failure. It's right. natural to have things not be perfect all the time. And so when things are handed to you on a silver platter, like I feel like it happened to me. Um, you know, I'm not, I wasn't prepared to deal with um, things not going my way, you know, and I, I wasn't, um, I, I thought it meant, you know, I'm very big on what things mean. I thought it meant, oh, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you're really not that good at this or maybe you shouldn't be doing this. And so that's rough. Um, the other thing is, I, you know, I grew up in a very, in a home where, you know, achievement was really important. My mom was a school teacher, really, you know, good grades are real, super important. And failure was really not an option. Right. So I was really taught to fear failure in a really, deep way. So what that's done to me in business, and I really have to fight it every day, is that I'm afraid to go off and do stuff that might not work out. Wow. You know, and that is so, so um, bad for your business. You have to be willing to just kind of 
just throw something against the wall and see if it sticks. Oh, you know what? And then that's just information. I just yeah. have to keep reminding myself that and reminding my clients of that, that failure isn't fatal. It's just information. Yeah. You know? But when, when, when you're growing up with, a, with, with, a, with parents who, you know, make you feel as if if you don't, you know, get straight A's, then you're, you're you know, you're nothing. I mean, that's, that's a little harsh, but I mean, that's kind of the way it was. Right. It feels, it, you know, you get, you get in, uh, you kind of program into yourself that, that, um, that, well, I have to succeed, and I do succeed a lot, but it's really, really, it's very um, crippling to fear failure. Right. You know, it's, 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 you shouldn't be failing all the time, but you, you know, but it's, but it's very, but to have fear of not having everything go perfect is going to paralyze you every time, you know, wow. so that's been, um, that's been a, a struggle, a, a, really a struggle for me, and, and, but at least the good news is that anything you struggle with, that's a, another great thing you can use in your business, because now you can connect with people on their you know, who are going through the same thing as you. So Absolutely. Now, that's another great thing about not being Miss Perfect is to be able to say, well, listen, I understand exactly how you feel because I have that same issue too, but here's how I want you to think about it instead. What if, you know, what if, uh, you know, making a mistake or doing something that didn't turn out exactly right was just, you know, a, a step on the road to, to making something even better than what you planned, right. you know? That's really how I, that's, that's really been my experience. But until you go out and do it, and you see that's true, you think, oh, yeah, you're just saying that to make me feel better. That's not really, you know, that's not really the way it is. But it is the way it is. You know, it's, and I mean, and, you know, you hear, everyone hears about the Thomas Edison, oh, you know, 10,000 ways not to, 9,999 right. ways not to make a light bulb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. but he ends up, everyone knows that he ended up succeeding in making the light bulb. Right. Um, you know, and you think, well, that's fine, because, but I'm not Thomas Edison. But yes, you are. You are Thomas Edison. Yeah. We're all Thomas Edison. And the difference between him and, and, and us is that he didn't give up, and most of us do. Right. You know? Um, so that's, the more I think about it and talk about it, the more I believe it. But it's a, it's a battle to fight your inner demons and your gut, which says, it doesn't say, I, I'm not going to do this because I think I might fail. It says, oh, I think I'll do this tomorrow. Right. Oh, I think I'll rearrange my desk. Oh, I, I think I'll do this other thing that's easier. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and stops you from, you know, from taking the steps that you need to take because you're afraid you might fail. Yeah. So. Awesome. I, I laugh when you talked about the Thomas Edison story because mm -hmm. I, when, I, when I talk sometimes, I, I talk about that as well as the story of Orville and Wilbur Wright. Right. And, mm -hmm. you know, when we hear about them as, oh, they invented the airplane, they invented flight. And so you kind of think of them as two guys, they hopped in this, this uh, vehicle and they were able to make it fly like forever. And most people don't realize what they're getting credit for is something that flew for 12 seconds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you <know>? Right. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's the that other, that's the other thing is that you don't have to hit it out of the park. Yeah. You, you just have to make, I mean, that's the, that's the things that people imagine if they don't make this. And I feel this way too. Lots of the time, if you don't make this amazing success the first time, yeah, then it's not worth doing. But what you find out when you actually allow yourself to take those first steps is that every step along the way, is it has its own reward like wow I did but you have to be willing to give yourself credit for these incremental steps not wait until you're this big important person making millions of dollars a year Absolutely. you have to be willing to say along the way oh wow you know this was this that was a good day I had a win today because you know even if you failed hey I learned something that's gonna make it better next time yeah or hey I you know I mean even Tony Robbins I think says uh, he uh, there are questions you ask yourself at the beginning and the end of every day I forget, you know, I used to do it every day. I forget, but one of them is, what did I learn today? Right. And if you can answer that question with one or two things, then you've, then you've had a good day, regardless of what happened. So, um, you know, learning is a big thing for me. And so if you realize that everything is information, everything is learning, then you don't have to fear failure and you don't have to, you don't have to worry about not looking perfect. If you get your ego out of the way, a lot of this crap goes out, out the window, too. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So we're talking about the... Uh the Thomas Edison and, and the Wright brothers, and that kind of is an easy transition for me into technology, mm -hmm. building things. So now we're in an age where everything is information, information, <laughs> information, and we've got, we wake up in the morning. One of the people that I follow on twi Twitter, uh, Kim Garst, she mentioned mm -hmm. this morning, do you ever feel like you're just sucked into a social media world um, and, you don't, and you don't have time to live? Uh, so how do you deal with uh, technology overload or what are the things that you use in your business as technology and how do you 
deal with that daily. Oh, uh, I love this topic, and it's so funny. I don't know if you could hear it, uh, but right when you started to talk about technology, my iPhone went off. Ah. You know, with a little, I meant to turn it off with this little notification that sounds like a little piano saying I have a meeting in half an hour or something like right. that. Um, I, I maybe this is bad, but I don't have a huge demarcation in my life between real life yep. and technology. I don't. I, there are some people that I have to actually sit and ask myself, "Have I ever met this person in real life?" I don't. I can't remember. I have. I, I have a couple of friends. I have one really good friend, uh, yeah. a guy named Bruce Brown. Uh, Bruce Brown, who is a, uh, um, a beach body coach now, but I knew him more when he was sort of a business coach. Right. And um, I met him on Twitter, um, he, where he is at Bruce Brown NC because he's right. in North Carolina, and I'm right. here in San Diego. And I've talked to him. I've talked to his wife, Marge. I know everything about their life. You know how they how they had a, met on a blind date and got got engaged two weeks later, years and years ago. Yeah. I mean, he's you know some guy you know probably in his sixties. Sorry, Bruce, but I think you are. And um, you know, I've never actually seen him in wow. real life. You know, we've talked on the phone and whatever. But we, hit, I consider him one of my you know one of my good friends. And not not just friends like on Facebook that friends like you don't really know them. I really know this guy. Now there are some there are different levels of that, but yeah. to me, I find social media to be um, and technology to be just the most. I feel so blessed to be living at this time. I always tell people, you know, I mean, you know, uh, I, I'm I won't tell you how old I am, but there's a lot of the stuff came out came out, you know, since I've been in business. You right. know, when I started it, when I started being on my own, the internet was pretty. You know, well, not new, but you know, pretty, pretty, um, pretty, uh, you know, um, basic. And and now, I mean, it's just it's just incredible. I mean, okay. I get most of my most of my clients come through social media now. Even people that I even people who come to me through uh, through um, you know from my network of people I actually used to know in real life, we've reconnected over social media, over yeah. LinkedIn. And stuff like that. I, I mean, I don't know how you run your own business. I don't know how people used to do their own business or freelance or anything like that before all this stuff was around. Right. Now, having said that, it is a time suck. It can be, it, you know, because what's 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 insidious about it is you go on there uh, thinking, well, I'm going to answer these messages from actual potential clients. I'm going to network with these people and that people, those people, and then you kind of get you wander off into the uh, in, into having conversations that really aren't about business. Right. And then a couple of hours later, and it feels like you're busy because you're sitting at your computer, right? You're typing. Yeah. You know, it feels like work. It looks like work, but it's not work. You right. know, it doesn't. And so you really have to make distinctions. So I usually do. I try to have a. Uh, I try to have a. Um, uh, like a timer on, like if I'm just going to go on for fun, okay, like like I put on like half an hour, okay, or 45 minutes, let's see how much how much can I get done before the buzzer goes off. Right. You know, kitchen timer is your friend when it comes to stuff like that because otherwise you just, you, you look up and you go like, where did the time go? Right. So that's, I like to use a kitchen timer for that. I mean, that's literally low tech, but, or I have a Pomodoro app on my phone that I use. Right. Um, if you know the Pomodoro technique, you probably yep. do. Absolutely. Um, that's something I talk about a lot. Um, I love to use, uh, I have little hacks, like I have this, there's this thing called followupthen.com, yep. which I love, I think I told you about, that I just love where you can send your, it's free, where you get, where it will send you an email, like somebody says, hey, you know, call me in two weeks, I, I, I can't deal with this right now, call me in two weeks, call me next month. So you send yourself an email at two weeks at followupthen.com. Right. Or one month at followupthen.com, and you type yourself a little note, and, and and two weeks from now, one month from now, you get an email saying follow up with uh, with Robert because uh, he said he wanted to talk to you in a month. Wow. Now, he may have just been putting you off, but best, get you would be, <laughs> be amazed how impressed people are when you say, hey, you know, you said follow up in a month. It's been a month, so I thought I'd call you. They're like, wow, you know, yeah. she really she's really on the ball. It's like all I did was remind. I knew I wouldn't remember, so all I did was remind myself by using this piece of technology. Right. So what I love about technology is that it connects people and also it, 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 it fills in the gaps where you're maybe not as strong. I mean, some people are really good at remembering to follow up, but I'm not. You know, I'm always on to the next thing. Yeah. So I use technology to help me, to help fill in my, my, my weaknesses, you know, and, 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 you know, that's, I just love that. I just love that kind of stuff. Um, I have an iPad. I have an iPhone. I ha I'm always connected, probably more than I should be. Yeah. Um, and uh, but it's just a, it's just a great way to meet new people and, and expand your possibilities in your network. And you know, if you can curb your usage of it, um, then you know, and you, can, and you can be conscious of when you're messing around and when you're actually doing something productive. Then that's really the key. Awesome. You know. So we've got a couple more questions here. What What are the things that and I'm transitioning one more time into 
present day? What's happening now? What are you creating now? What are the things that you are, what are the goodies that you're getting ready to give out to the world these days? Well, um, like I said, um, I, one of the things I've been doing lately, which I really am enjoying a lot, is, uh, you know, I, 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 I tout all this virtual work and stuff like that, but one of the things that really works really well with me with people is to actually meet them in person to spend some real, like, intense time with them, yeah. where we, where we, especially at the beginning of our relationship, because then after that, if all you do is phone and Skype and stuff like that, you've already really connected, right. and you've really spent some time together, so I have folks come here to San Diego to spend a you know a VIP day with me at the University Club downtown. We spend the whole day going over everything in their business, and it's just uh, it's it's we we have great lunch and we when they walk away with it, the morning is all about brainstorming all the ideas, laying everything out on the table, seeing what possible what's possible. And the afternoon is all about structure, which is like okay, which idea do we want to pursue? Right. What's you know, what are you going to do? What's the content? of what you're going to do and then how are you going to get people to buy it like what's like what's the what and what's the how what's the content and what's the marketing because those are the, they're both important and um, you know some people will spend all their time working on like an information product or something for example right. or a program a lot of people I work with are coaches so they'll be, they'll, they'll be putting the finishing touches on their coaching program and stuff and they'll be working on it and working on it but I'm like well how are you going to get people to come to this workshop right you know have you have you had have you given any thought to how you're going to fill these seats well, you know, I was like, no. I mean, you got you got to be you got to spend a lot more time on that, and the content. I you know, I know that you're great at what you do. I'm sure you'll show up with great stuff. Let's figure out how we're going to get folks to come. You right. know, what are we going to call it? What are we going to you know? Who are you? How are you going to? Uh, what kind of a, a story like Irish Spring Soap? What kind of story are you going to make around this? This event or this or this process that you're going to that you're trying to sell that are going to make people go, oh my God, I want that experience. You know, we that's that to me is what we spend the afternoon doing, um, and then we you know we walk away with a plan. So then we follow up over the next couple of months and you know make sure that the, the plan gets executed. Got so it. that's that's something I really love doing. And then the other thing, as I mentioned before, is you know I'm, I'm kind of a personal development junkie. And besides being a writer, I'm also a cartoonist and a musician and a bunch of other things. Oh wow! Yeah. So I mean, like we didn't. I'm not even going to go there right now. But that um, that is uh, if people want to check out. If other people feel that like they've got a uh, a, uh, a plethora of um, of talents and interests, and they're not really sure what you know how to balance them all in their life. We, I have a blog called the Da Vinci Dilemma. Right. It's davincidilemma.com. Um, if you go there, you can grab a free uh, a free ebook that my partner wrote called uh, something like I think it's how to how to accomplish anything in an hour a day, ah. <laughs> which is which is pretty cool because you can you can find a uh, like a free hour in every day just by not wasting time on social media and by not doing certain things you if there's if there's a project a passion project that you've been putting off wondering hey I'm never going to get around to writing this novel I'm never going to get around to you know spending any time you know with my music or my whatever you know that or starting a business you know things like that you know you can find the time by by you know by kind of stealing it away from you know less productive activities so that's um you know, that, that blog has to do with productivity and dealing with overwhelm and dealing with procrastination and guilt and things like that so you know that's a cool thing um, yeah. for people to be able to uh, to do. I find most of my clients fall into this Da Vinci personality. Right. I, they have a million ideas. They have a lot of different things they could be doing. I see you got a guitar in the background there. <laughs> uh, you know, so it's it's like you know you've obviously integrated this into your life. Right. You know, it's, so you're somebody I'd like to talk to about that. Maybe we can inter I can interview you sometime about that. How you manage to work in your music into your daily routine. Right. But you know, we we talk about people like Steve Martin. You know, we, we have a lot of like celebrities that we that we profile on the on the site. Steve Martin, actor, poet, writer, B Grammy award winning banjo player. Right. You know, I mean, how do you do all these things? It's I mean, it's easy when you're famous and you have people to help you. But how do you how do you define yourself in your mind? How do you and how do you you know? He, he still has to make the time to practice his music. It's still probably still not that easy, right? right. You have to be committed. So. That's a passion of mine that's sort of outside of my marketing job, but not really because most of my clients fall into both categories. Right. You know? so, um, so that's something I'm really excited about too. Good deal. I, I, you've mentioned in, this, in your last three minutes or so, you've mentioned about three or four things that I would love to follow up with you on. We're not going to have time to do it today. Right. I know. But you kind of glossed over this word partner when you mm -hmm. talked about the book. Oh, and, and right. Yeah, that, that's huge. In, in, in business, and I want to follow up with on that sometimes because of this very thing. There are times where I, in my own business, find that 
I need a little push or I'm looking for somebody that's as committed as I am to kind of bounce things off of. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop the conversation right here because I don't want to go down that road. <laughs> because We'll talk the, about that another time. Yes. Yeah, we never. Yeah, I have some I have some I have some things to say about that. There are both on the on the positive side and the yeah. negative side about yeah. that. So, yeah, because it's there. It's a double edged sword. You yeah. know, have, when, when you're on your own, when you're on, uh, when you're wanting to be independent and yet you know, you're, that you're bumping up against, you still have to agree on stuff, right. which is not always so easy. But, you know. Stop, uh, stop, stop. Right, you're going. Right, you're, 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 you're messing up the next conversation. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. So, okay. All right. So here's, you know what, let, let's just kind of wrap this up right now. Um, I asked this question at the end of all of the interviews. Lisa Rothstein, what does success look like to you? Wow, that's great. Success to me looks like you know, getting up in the morning, doing what you do, knowing that you're, you're going to get to do something that you really love, knowing that you're going to have value in the world. Right. Um, actually, actually, I think one of my new clients said it has said it best. I mean, yesterday's conversation, we came up with a line for her that was something like, you know, when well, you've designed a life that you don't need a vacation from. Wow. That's success to me. You know, that you can take a vacation when you want, but you don't need a vacation from your life because it's the life that you really want to live. And yeah. um, to me, when I if I can have that. Um, you know, I, I have that some days. <laughs> wow. When I, if I can have that more days, that's, that'll look like success for me. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. It's been great having you today. We, I, like I said just now, we've, we've got to follow up. We've got to do this again. And I, I know that there's going to be some crazy epic stuff that's going to come out of our next conversation. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Uh, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, Lisa Rothstein, thanks so much for joining me today, spending some time in front of your beautiful French doors there with <laughs> me today on what success looks like. Just want to say to everybody, be bold, be exceptional, and remember that every moment is just an opportunity for you to create something new, what success looks like. Have an awesome day. Thanks for watching today. If you'd like to consult with Lisa Rothstein, visit her at www.consultwithlisa.com. Tell her you saw her on What Success Looks Like and get ready for a special offer. Hi there, I'm so glad that you were able to join me today. I wanna to talk to you about one thing really quickly. A lot of us have goals, a lot of us have dreams, a lot of us have things that we want to achieve, and the reason that we can't achieve them is due to one thing. That one thing is fear. Fear is the barrier that stands in between where you are now and greatness. Fear is the obstacle that you've gotta overcome in order to get to your success. And I wanna be able to help you do that. So I've put together a book called 28 Days to a New Me, A Journey of Commitment that just came out and you can grab that for your Kindle or for your Nook on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. 28 Days to a New Me is about creating powerful transformations that'll change your life. It's about redefining commitment. It's about being bold and being exceptional. Go online to amazon.com or barnesandnoble.com, grab a copy and see how you can change your life.